Hello, it's Vocal Senpai, and this is a series in which every chapter of the whole NCERT biology book of 11th and 12th class will be covered in audiobook format. In this video, the chapter 7 of class 11 biology book, that is, structural organization in animals, will be narrated. So, sit back, relax, and let's listen and learn. Chapter 7 Structural Organization in Animals in the preceding chapters you came across a large variety of organisms, both unicellular and multicellular, of the animal kingdom. In unicellular organisms, all functions like digestion, respiration and reproduction are performed by a single cell. In the complex body of multicellular animals, the same basic functions are carried out by different groups of cells in a well-organized manner. The body of a simple organism like Hydra, is made of different types of cells and the number of cells in each type can be in thousands. The human body is composed of billions of cells to perform various functions. How do these cells in the body work together? In multicellular animals, a group of similar cells along with intercellular substances perform a specific function. Such an organization is called tissue. You may be surprised to know that all complex animals consist of only four basic types of tissues. These tissues are organized in specific proportion and pattern to form an organ like stomach, lung, heart and kidney. When two or more organs perform a common function by their physical and or chemical interaction, they together form organ system, example, digestive system, respiratory system, etc. Cells Tissues, organs and organ systems split up the work in a way that exhibits division of labor and contribute to the survival of the body as a whole. Animal Tissues The structure of the cells vary according to their function. Therefore, the tissues are different and are broadly classified into four types I. Epithelial, 2. Connective, 3. Muscular and 4. Neural Epithelial Tissue we commonly refer to an epithelial tissue as epithelium, PL, epithelia. This tissue has a free surface, which faces either a body fluid or the outside environment and thus provides a covering or a lining for some part of the body. The cells are compactly packed with little intercellular matrix. There are two types of epithelial tissues, namely simple epithelium and compound epithelium. Simple epithelium is composed of a single layer of cells and functions as a lining for body cavities, ducts, and tubes. The compound epithelium consists of two or more cell layers and has protective function as it does in our skin. On the basis of structural modification of the cells, simple epithelium is further divided into three types. These are I, squamous, 2, cuboidal, 3, columnar, figure 7.1. The squamous epithelium is made of a single thin layer of flattened cells with irregular boundaries. They are found in the walls of blood vessels and air sacs of lungs and are involved in functions like forming a diffusion boundary. The cuboidal epithelium is composed of a single layer of cube-like cells. This is commonly found in ducts of glands and tubular parts of nephrons in kidneys and its main functions are secretion and absorption. The epithelium of proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, of nephron in the kidney has microvilli. The columnar epithelium is composed of a single layer of tall and slender cells. Their nuclei are located at the base. Free surface may have microvilli. They are found in the lining of stomach and intestine and help in secretion and absorption. If the columnar or cuboidal cells bear cilia on their free surface, they are called ciliate epithelium, figure 7.1d. Their function is to move particles or mucus in a specific direction over the epithelium. They are mainly present in the inner surface of hollow organs like bronchioles and fallopian tubes. Some of the columnar or cuboidal cells get specialized for secretion and are called glandular epithelium, Figure 7.2. They are mainly of two types, unicellular, consisting of isolated glandular cells, 
goblet cells of the alimentary canal and multicellular consisting of cluster of cells salivary gland on the basis of the mode of pouring of their secretions glands are divided into two categories namely exocrine and endocrine glands exocrine glands secrete mucus saliva earwax oil milk digestive enzymes and other cell products these products are released through ducts or tubes in contrast endocrine glands do not have ducts their products called hormones are secreted directly into the fluid bathing the gland compound epithelium is made of more than one layer multilayered of cells and thus has a limited role in secretion and absorption figure 7.3 their main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses they cover the dry surface of the skin the most surface of buccal cavity pharynx inner lining of ducts of salivary glands and of pancreatic ducts all cells in epithelium are held together with little intercellular material in nearly all animal tissues specialized junctions provide both structural and functional links between its individual cells three types of cell junctions are found in the epithelium and other tissues these are called as tight adhering and gap junctions tight junctions help to stop substances from leaking across a tissue adhering junctions perform cementing to keep neighboring cells together gap junctions facilitate the cells to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasm of adjoining cells for rapid transfer of ions small molecules and sometimes big molecules connective tissue connective tissues are most abundant and widely distributed in the body of complex animals they are named connective tissues because of their special function of linking and supporting other tissues organs of the body they range from soft connective tissues to specialized types which include cartilage bone adipose and blood in all connective tissues except blood the cells secrete fibers of structural proteins called collagen or elastin the fibers provide strength elasticity and flexibility to the tissue these cells also secrete modified polysaccharides which accumulate between cells and fibers and act as matrix ground substance connective tissues are classified into three types i loose connective tissue 2 dense connective tissue and 3 specialized connective tissue loose connective tissue has cells and fibers loosely arranged in a semi fluid ground substance for example areolar tissue present beneath the skin figure 7.4 often it serves as a support framework for epithelium it contains fibroblasts cells that produce and secrete fibers macrophages and mast cells adipose tissue is another type of loose connective tissue located mainly beneath the skin The cells of this tissue are specialized to store fats. The excess of nutrients which are not used immediately are converted into fats and are stored in this tissue. Fibers and fibroblasts are compactly packed in the dense connective tissues. Orientation of fibers show a regular or irregular pattern and are called dense regular and dense irregular tissues. In the dense regular connective tissues The collagen fibers are present in rows between many parallel bundles of fibers. Tendons which attach skeletal muscles to bones and ligaments which attach one bone to another are examples of this tissue. Dense irregular connective tissue has fibroblasts and many fibers mostly collagen that are oriented differently figure 7.5. This tissue is present in the skin. Cartilage Bones and blood are various types of specialized connective tissues. The intercellular material of cartilage is solid and pliable and resists compression. Cells of this tissue, chondrocytes, are enclosed in small cavities within the matrix secreted by them, figure 7.6a. Most of the cartilages in vertebrate embryos are replaced by bones in adults. Cartilage is present in the tip of nose. outer ear joints between adjacent bones of the vertebral column limbs and hands in adults 
Bones have a hard and non-pliable ground substance, rich in calcium salts and collagen fibers which give bone its strength, figure 7.6b. It is the main tissue that provides structural frame to the body. Bones support and protect softer tissues and organs. The bone cells, osteocytes, are present in the spaces called lacuna. Limb bones, such as the long bones of the legs, serve weight-bearing functions. They also interact with skeletal muscles attached to them to bring about movements. The bone marrow in some bones is the site of production of blood cells. Blood is a fluid connective tissue containing plasma, red blood cells, RBC, white blood cells, WBC, and platelets, figure 7.6c. It is the main circulating fluid that helps in the transport of various substances. You will learn more about blood in chapters 17 and 18. Muscle Tissue Each muscle is made of many long, cylindrical fibers arranged in parallel arrays. These fibers are composed of numerous fine fibrils, called myofibrils. Muscle fibers contract, shorten, in response to stimulation, then relax, lengthen and return to their uncontracted state in a coordinated fashion. Their action moves the body to adjust to the changes in the environment and to maintain the positions of the various parts of the body. In general, muscles play an active role in all the movements of the body. Muscles are of three types, skeletal, smooth and cardiac. Skeletal muscle tissue is closely attached to skeletal bones. In a typical muscle such as the biceps, striated, striped, skeletal muscle fibers are bundled together in a parallel fashion, figure 7.7a. A sheath of tough connective tissue encloses several bundles of muscle fibers. You will learn more about this in chapter 20. The smooth muscle fibers taper at both ends, fusiform, and do not show striations, figure 7.7b. Cell junctions hold them together and they are bundled together in a connective tissue sheath. The wall of internal organs such as the blood vessels, stomach and intestine contains this type of muscle tissue. Smooth muscles are involuntary as their functioning cannot be directly controlled. We usually are not able to make it contract merely by thinking about it as we can do with skeletal muscles. Cardiac muscle tissue is a contractile tissue present only in the heart. Cell junctions fuse the plasma membranes of cardiac muscle cells and make them stick together, figure 7.7c. Communication junctions, intercalated discs, at some fusion points allow the cells to contract as a unit, i.e., when one cell receives a signal to contract, its neighbors are also stimulated to contract. Neural tissue Neural tissue exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing conditions. Neurons, the unit of neural system are excitable cells, figure 7.8. The neuroglial cell which constitute the rest of the neural system protect and support neurons. Neuroglia make up more than one half the volume of neural tissue in our body. When a neuron is suitably stimulated, an electrical disturbance is generated which swiftly travels along its plasma membrane. Arrival of the disturbance at the neuron's endings or output zone triggers events that may cause stimulation or inhibition of adjacent neurons and other cells. You will study the details in Chapter 21. Organ and Organ System the basic tissues mentioned above organize to form organs, which in turn associate to form organ systems in the multicellular organisms. Such an organization is essential for more efficient and better coordinated activities of millions of cells constituting an organism. Each organ in our body is made of one or more type of tissues. For example, our heart consists of all the four types of tissues, i.e. epithelial, connective, muscular and neural. We also notice, after some careful study, that the complexity in organ and organ systems displays certain discernible trend. This discernible trend is called evolutionary trend. You will study the details in class 12. You are being introduced to morphology 
and anatomy of three organisms at different evolutionary levels to show their organization and functioning. Morphology refers to study of form or externally visible features. In the case of plants or microbes, the term morphology precisely means only this. In case of animals, this refers to the external appearance of the organs or parts of the body. The word anatomy conventionally is used for the study of morphology of internal organs in the animals. You will learn the morphology and anatomy of earthworm, cockroach and frog representing invertebrates and vertebrates. Earthworm Earthworm is a reddish-brown terrestrial invertebrate that inhabits the upper layer of the moist soil. During daytime, they live in burrows made by boring and swallowing the soil. In the gardens, they can be traced by their fecal deposits known as worm castings. The common Indian earthworms are Fatima and Lumbricus. Morphology Earthworms have long cylindrical body. The body is divided into more than 100 short segments, which are similar, metameres about 100 to 120 in number. The dorsal surface of the body is marked by a dark median mid-dorsal line, dorsal blood vessel, along the longitudinal axis of the body. The ventral surface is distinguished by the presence of genital openings, pores. Anterior end consists of the mouth and the prostomium, a lobe which serves as a covering for the mouth and as a wedge to force open cracks in the soil into which the earthworm may crawl. The prostomium is sensory in function. The first body segment is called the peristomium, buccal segment, which contains the mouth. In a mature worm, segments 14 to 16 are covered by a prominent dark band of glandular tissue called clitellum. Thus the body is divisible into three prominent regions, Preclitellar, clitellar and postclitellar segments, figure 7.9. Four pairs of spermatical apertures are situated on the ventrolateral sides of the intersegmental grooves, i.e., fifth to ninth segments. A single female genital pore is present in the midventral line of 14th segment. A pair of male genital pores are present on the ventrolateral sides of the 18th segment. Numerous minute pores called nephridiopores open on the surface of the body. In each body segment, except the first, last and clitellum, there are rows of S-shaped setae embedded in the epidermal pits in the middle of each segment. Setae can be extended or retracted. Their principal role is in locomotion. Anatomy the body wall of the earthworm is covered externally by a thin non-cellular cuticle below which is the epidermis, two muscle layers, circular and longitudinal, and an innermost coelomic epithelium. The epidermis is made up of a single layer of columnar epithelial cells which contain secretory gland cells. The alimentary canal is a straight tube and runs between first to last segment of the body. Figure 7.10 a terminal mouth opens into the buccal cavity, one to three segments, which leads into muscular pharynx. A small narrow tube, oesophagus, five to seven segments, continues into a muscular gizzard, eight to nine segments. It helps in grinding the soil particles and decaying leaves, etc. The stomach extends from nine to fourteen segments. The food of the earthworm is decaying leaves and organic matter mixed with soil. Calciferous glands, present in the stomach, neutralize the humic acid present in humus. Intestine starts from the 15th segment onwards and continues till the last segment. A pair of short and conical intestinal CC project from the intestine on the 26th segment. The characteristic feature of the intestine after 26th segment except the last 23rd to 25th segments is the presence of internal median fold of dorsal wall called tiflosol. This increases the effective area of absorption in the intestine. The alimentary canal opens to the exterior by a small rounded aperture called anus. The ingested organic rich soil passes through the digestive tract where digestive enzymes break down complex food into smaller absorbable units. These simpler molecules are absorbed through intestinal membranes and are utilized. 
Fatima exhibits a closed type of blood vascular system consisting of blood vessels, capillaries and heart. Figure 7.11 Due to closed circulatory system, blood is confined to the heart and blood vessels. Contractions keep blood circulating in one direction. Smaller blood vessels supply the gut, nerve cord and the body wall. Blood glands are present on the 4th, 5th and 6th segments. They produce blood cells and hemoglobin which is dissolved in blood plasma. Blood cells are phagocytic in nature. Earthworms lack specialized breathing devices. Respiratory exchange occurs through most body surface into their blood stream. The excretory organs occur as segmentally arranged called tubules called nephridia, sing dot, nephridium. They are of three types, I, septal nephridia, present on both the sides of intersegmental septa of segment 15 to the last that open into intestine, 2, integumentary nephridia, attached to lining of the body wall of segment 3 to the last that open on the body surface and 3, pharyngeal nephridia, present as three paired tufts in the fourth, fifth and sixth segments, figure 7.12. These different types of nephridia are basically similar in structure. Nephridia regulate the volume and composition of the body fluids. A nephridium starts out as a funnel that collects excess fluid from coelomic chamber. The funnel connects with a tubular part of the nephridium which delivers the wastes through a pore to the surface in the body wall into the digestive tube. Nervous system is basically represented by ganglia arranged segment ways on the ventral paired nerve cord. The nerve cord in the anterior region, third and fourth segments, bifurcates, laterally encircling the pharynx and joins the cerebral ganglia dorsally to form a nerve ring. The cerebral ganglia along with other nerves in the ring integrate sensory input as well as command muscular responses of the body. Sensory system does not have eyes but thus poses light and touch sensitive organs, receptor cells to distinguish the light intensities and to feel the vibrations in the ground. Worms have specialized chemoreceptors taste receptors, which react to chemical stimuli. These sense organs are located on the anterior part of the worm. Earthworm is hermaphrodite, bisexual, i.e., testes and ovaries are present in the same individual, figure 7.13. There are two pairs of testes present in the 10th and 11th segments. Their vasa differentia run up to the 18th segment where they join the prostatic duct. Two pairs of accessory glands are present, one pair each in the 17th and 19th segments. The common prostate and spermatic duct, vasa deferentia, opens to the exterior by a pair of male genital pores on the ventrolateral side of the 18th segment. Four pairs of spermatheci are located in 6th to 9th segments, one pair in each segment. They receive and store spermatozoa during copulation. One pair of ovaries is attached at the intersegmental septum of the 12th and 13th segments. Ovarian funnels are present beneath the ovaries which continue into oviduct, join together and open on the ventral side as a single median female genital pore on the 14th segment. A mutual exchange of sperm occurs between two worms during mating. One worm has to find another worm, and they mate juxtaposing opposite gondal openings exchanging packets of sperms called spermatophores. Mature sperm and egg cells and nutritive fluid are deposited in cocoons produced by the gland cells of clitellum. Fertilization and development occur within the cocoons which are deposited in soil. The ova, eggs, are fertilized by the sperm cells within the cocoon which then slips off the worm and is deposited in or on the soil. The cocoon holds the worm embryos. After about 3 weeks, each cocoon produces 2-20 to 20 baby worms with an average of 4. Development of earthworms is direct, i.e., there is no larva formed. Earthworms are known as friends of farmers because they make burrows in the soil and make it porous which helps in respiration and penetration of the developing plant roots. 
The process of increasing fertility of soil by the earthworms is called vermicomposting. They are also used as bait in game fishing. Cockroach Cockroaches are brown or black-bodied animals that are included in class Insecta of Phylum Arthropoda. Bright yellow, red and green colored cockroaches have also been reported in tropical regions. Their size ranges from a quarter inches to three inches, 0.6 to 7.6 centimeters, and have long antenna, legs and flat extension of the upper body wall that conceals head. They are nocturnal omnivores that live in damp places throughout the world. They have become residents of human homes and thus are serious pests and vectors of several diseases. Morphology The adults of the common species of cockroach, Periplaneta americana, are about 34 to 53 mm long with wings that extend beyond the tip of the abdomen in males. The body of the cockroach is segmented and divisible into three distinct regions, head, thorax and abdomen, figure 7.14. The entire body is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton, brown in color. In each segment, exoskeleton has hardened plates called sclerites, tergites dorsally and sternites ventrally, that are joined to each other by a thin and flexible articular membrane, arthrodial membrane. Head is triangular in shape and lies anteriorly at right angels to the longitudinal body axis. It is formed by the fusion of six segments and shows great mobility in all directions due to flexible neck, figure 7.15. The head capsule bears a pair of compound eyes. A pair of thread-like antennae arise from membranous sockets lying in front of eyes. Antennae have sensory receptors that help in monitoring the environment. Anterior end of the head bears appendages forming biting and chewing type of mouth parts. The mouth parts consisting of a labrum, upper lip, a pair of mandibles, a pair of maxillae and a labium, lower lip. A median flexible lobe, acting as tongue, hypopharynx, lies within the cavity enclosed by the mouth parts, figure 7.15b. Thorax consists of three parts, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. The head is connected with thorax by a short extension of the prothorax known as the neck. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of walking legs. The first pair of wings arises from mesothorax and the second pair from metathorax. Four wings, mesothoracic, called tegmina are opaque dark and leathery and cover the hind wings when at rest. The hind wings are transparent, membranous and are used in flight. The abdomen in both males and females consists of 10 segments. In females, the 7th sternum is boat shaped and together with the 8th and 9th sterna forms a brood or genital pouch whose anterior part contains female gonopore, spermatical pores and collateral glands. In males, Genital pouch or chamber lies at the hind end of abdomen bounded dorsally by 9th and 10th terga and ventrally by the 9th sternum. It contains dorsal anus, ventral male genital pore and gonapophysis. Males bear a pair of short, thread-like anal styles which are absent in females. In both sexes, the 10th segment bears a pair of jointed filamentose structures called anal cerci. Anatomy the alimentary canal present in the body cavity is divided into three regions, foregut, midgut and hindgut, figure 7.16. The mouth opens into a short tubular pharynx, leading to a narrow tubular passage called oesophagus. This in turn opens into a sac-like structure called crop used for storing of food. The crop is followed by gizzard or proventriculus. It has an outer layer of thick circular muscles and thick inner cuticle forming six highly chitinous plate called teeth. Gizzard helps in grinding the food particles. The entire foregut is lined by cuticle. A ring of six to eight blind tubules called hepatic or gastric cica is present at the junction of foregut and migut, which secrete digestive juice. At the junction of migut, 
and Hindgut is present another ring of 100 to 150 yellow colored thin filamentous malpighian tubules. They help in removal of excretory products from hemolymph. The Hindgut is broader than midgut and is differentiated into ileum, colon and rectum. The rectum opens out through anus. Blood vascular system of cockroach is an open type, figure 7.17. Blood vessels are poorly developed and open into space, hemocoel. Visceral organs located in the hemocoel are bathed in blood, hemolymph. The hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes. Heart of cockroach consists of elongated muscular tube lying along mid-dorsal line of thorax and abdomen. It is differentiated into funnel-shaped chambers with ostea on either side. Blood from sinuses enter heart through ostea and is pumped anteriorly to sinuses again. The respiratory system consists of a network of trachea that open through 10 pairs of small holes called spiracles present on the lateral side of the body. Thin branching tubes, tracheal tubes subdivided into tracheoles, carry oxygen from the air to all the parts. The opening of the spiracles is regulated by the sphincters. Exchange of gases take place at the tracheoles by diffusion. Excretion is performed by malpighian tubules. Each tubule is lined by glandular and ciliate cells. They absorb nitrogenous waste products and convert them into uric acid which is excreted out through the hinder. Therefore, this insect is called uricotelic. In addition, the fat body Nephrocytes and urcos glands also help in excretion. The nervous system of cockroach consists of a series of fused, segmentally arranged ganglia joined by paired longitudinal connectives on the ventral side. Three ganglia lie in the thorax and six in the abdomen. The nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body. The head holds a bit of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral, belly side, part of its body. So, now you understand that if the head of a cockroach is cut off, it will still live for as long as one week. In the head region, the brain is represented by supraosophageal ganglion which supplies nerves to antennae and compound eyes. In cockroach, the sense organs are antennae, eyes, maxillary palps, labial palps, anal cerci, etc. The compound eyes are situated at the dorsal surface of the head. Each eye consists of about 2000 hexagonal omatidia, sing dot omatidium. With the help of several omatidia, a cockroach can receive several images of an object. This kind of vision is known as mosaic vision with more sensitivity but less resolution, being common during night, hence called nocturnal vision. Cockroaches are dioecious and both sexes have well-developed reproductive organs, figure 7.18. Male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes, one lying on each lateral side in the fourth to sixth abdominal segments. From each testis arises a thin vas difference, which opens into ejaculatory duct through seminal vesicle. The ejaculatory duct opens into male gonopore situated ventral to anus. A characteristic mushroom-shaped gland is present in the 6th to 7th abdominal segments which functions as an accessory reproductive gland. The external genitalia are represented by male gonapophysis or phallomere, chitinous asymmetrical structures surrounding the male gonopore. The sperms are stored in the seminal vesicles and are glued together in the form of bundles called spermatophores which are discharged during copulation. The female reproductive cystin consists of two large ovaries lying laterally in the 2nd 6th abdominal segments. Each ovary is formed of a group of eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles containing a chain of developing ova. Oviducts of each ovary unite into a single median oviduct, also called vagina, which opens into the genital chamber. A pair of spermatheca is present in the sixth segment which opens into the genital chamber. Sperms are transferred through spermatophores. Their fertilized eggs are encased in capsules called uthike. Uthika is a dark reddish to blackish brown capsule 
about 3 8 8 mm long. They are dropped or glued to a suitable surface, usually in a crack or crevice of high relative humidity near a food source. On an average, females produce 9 to 10 uthike, each containing 14 to 16 eggs. The development of P. americana is parometabolous, meaning there is development through nymphal stage. The nymphs look very much like adults. The nymph grows by molting about 13 times to reach the adult form. The next to last nymphal stage has wing pads, but only adult cockroaches have wings. Many species of cockroaches are wild and are of no known economic importance yet. A few species thrive in and around human habitat. They are pests because they spoil food and contaminate it with their smelly excreta. They can transmit a variety of bacterial diseases by contaminating food material. Frogs Frogs can live both on land and in fresh water and belong to class Amphibia of Phylum Chordata. The most common species of frog found in India is Rana tigrina. They do not have constant body temperature i.e. Their body temperature varies with the temperature of the environment. Such animals are called cold-blooded or poculadons. You might have also noticed changes in the color of the frogs while they are in grasses and on dry land. They have the ability to change the color to hide them from their enemies, camouflage. This protective coloration is called mimicry. You may also know that frogs are not seen during peak summer and winter. During this period they take shelter in deep burrows to protect them from extreme heat and cold. This is known as summer sleep, estivation, and winter sleep, hibernation, respectively. Morphology Have you ever touched the skin of frog? The skin is smooth and slippery due to the presence of mucus. The skin is always maintained in a moist condition. The color of dorsal side of body is generally olive green with dark irregular spots. On the ventral side the skin is uniformly pale yellow. The frog never drinks water but absorb it through the skin. Body of a frog is divisible into head and trunk, figure 7.19. A neck and tail are absent. Above the mouth, a pair of nostrils is present. Eyes are bulged and covered by a nictitating membrane that protects them while in water. On either side of eyes a membranous tympanum, ear, receives sound signals. The forelimbs and hind limbs help in swimming, walking, leaping and burrowing. The hind limbs end in five digits and they are larger and muscular than forelimbs that end in four digits. Feet have webbed digits that help in swimming. Frogs exhibit sexual dimorphism. Male frogs can be distinguished by the presence of sound-producing vocal sacs and also a copulatory pad on the first digit of the four limbs which are absent in female frogs. Anatomy The body cavity of frogs accommodate different organ systems such as digestive, circulatory, respiratory, nervous, excretory and reproductive systems with well-developed structures and functions, figure 7.20. The digestive system consists of alimentary canal and digestive glands. The alimentary canal is short because frogs are carnivores and hence the length of intestine is reduced. The mouth opens into the buccal cavity that anatomy the body cavity of frogs accommodate different organ systems such as digestive, circulatory, respiratory, nervous, excretory and reproductive systems with well-developed structures and functions, figure 7.20. The digestive system consists of alimentary canal and digestive glands. The alimentary canal is short because frogs are carnivores and hence the length of intestine is reduced. The mouth opens into the buccal cavity that leads to the oesophagus through pharynx. Oesophagus is a short tube that opens into the stomach which in turn continues as the intestine, rectum and finally opens outside by the cloaca. Liver secretes bile that is stored in the gall bladder. Pancreas, a digestive gland produces pancreatic juice containing digestive enzymes. Food is captured by the bilobed tongue. 
Digestion of food takes place by the action of HCL and gastric juices secreted from the walls of the stomach. Partially digested food called chyme is passed from stomach to the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. The duodenum receives bile from gall bladder and pancreatic juices from the pancreas through a common bile duct. Bile emulsifies fat and pancreatic juices digest carbohydrates and proteins. Final digestion takes place in the intestine. Digested food is absorbed by the numerous finger-like folds in the inner wall of intestine called villi and microvilli. The undigested solid waste moves into the rectum and passes out through cloaca. Frogs respire on land and in the water by two different methods. In water, Skin acts as aquatic respiratory organ, cutaneous respiration. Dissolved oxygen in the water is exchanged through the skin by diffusion. On land, the buccal cavity, skin and lungs act as the respiratory organs. The respiration by lungs is called pulmonary respiration. The lungs are a pair of elongated, pink-colored sac-like structures present in the upper part of the trunk region, thorax. Air enters through the nostrils into the buccal cavity and then to lungs. During estivation and hibernation gaseous exchange takes place through skin. The vascular system of frog is well-developed closed type. Frogs have a lymphatic system also. The blood vascular system involves heart, blood vessels and blood. The lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymph channels and lymph nodes. Heart is a muscular structure situated in the upper part of the body cavity. It has three chambers, two atria and one ventricle and is covered by a membrane called pericardium. A triangular structure called sinus venosus joins the right atrium. It receives blood through the major veins called vena cava. The ventricle opens into a sac-like conus arteriosus on the ventral side of the heart. The blood from the heart is carried to all parts of the body by the arteries, arterial system. The veins collect blood from different parts of body to the heart and form the venous system. Special venous connection between liver and intestine as well as the kidney and lower parts of the body are present in frogs. The former is called hepatic portal system and the latter is called renal portal system. The blood is composed of plasma and cells. The blood cells are RBC, red blood cells, or erythrocytes, WBC, white blood cells, or leukocytes and platelets. RBCs are nucleated and contain red-colored pigment namely hemoglobin. The lymph is different from blood. It lacks few proteins and RBCs. The blood carries nutrients, gases and water to the respective sites during the circulation. The circulation of blood is achieved by the pumping action of the muscular heart. The elimination of nitrogenous wastes is carried out by a well-developed excretory system. The excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys, ureters, cloaca and urinary bladder. These are compact, dark red and bean-like structures situated a little posteriorly in the body cavity on both sides of vertebral column. Each kidney is composed of several structural and functional units called uriniferous tubules or nephrons. Two ureters emerge from the kidneys in the male frogs. The ureters act as urinogenital duct which opens into the cloaca. In females the ureters and oviduct open separately in the cloaca. The thin-walled urinary bladder is present ventral to the rectum which also opens in the cloaca. The frog excretes urea and thus is a ureotelic animal. Excretory wastes are carried by blood into the kidney where it is separated and excreted. The system for control and coordination is highly evolved in the frog. It includes both neural system and endocrine glands. The chemical coordination of various organs of the body is achieved by hormones which are secreted by the endocrine glands. The prominent endocrine glands found in frog are pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pineal body, pancreatic islets, adrenals and gonads. The nervous system is organized into a central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, 
a peripheral nervous system, cranial and spinal nerves, and an autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. There are 10 pairs of cranial nerves arising from the brain. Brain is enclosed in a bony structure called brain box, cranium. The brain is divided into forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain includes olfactory lobes, paired cerebral hemispheres and unpaired diencephalon. The midbrain is characterized by a pair of optic lobes. Hindbrain consists of cerebellum and medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata passes out through the foramen magnum and continues into spinal cord, which is enclosed in the vertebral column. Frog has different types of sense organs, namely organs of touch, sensory papillae, taste, taste buds, smell, nasal epithelium, vision, eyes, and hearing, tympanum with internal ears. Out of these, eyes and internal ears are well-organized structures and the rest are cellular aggregations around nerve endings. Eyes in a frog are a pair of spherical structures situated in the orbit in skull. These are simple eyes, possessing only one unit. External ear is absent in frogs, and only tympanum can be seen externally. The ear is an organ of hearing as well as balancing, equilibrium. Frogs have well-organized male and female reproductive systems. Male reproductive organs consist of a pair of yellowish ovoid testes, figure 7.21, which are found adhered to the upper part of kidneys by a double fold of peritoneum called mesorchium. Vasa efferentia are 10 to 12 in number that arise from testes. They enter the kidneys on their side and open into Bidder's canal. Finally, it communicates with the urinogenital duct that comes out of the kidneys and opens into the cloaca. The cloaca is a small, median chamber that is used to pass fecal matter urine and sperms to the exterior. The female reproductive organs include a pair of ovaries, figure 7.22. The ovaries are situated near kidneys and there is no functional connection with kidneys. A pair of oviduct arising from the ovaries opens into the cloaca separately. A mature female can lay 2500 to 3000 ova at a time. Fertilization is external and takes place in water. Development involves a larval stage called tadpole. Tadpole undergoes metamorphosis to form the adult. Frogs are beneficial for mankind because they eat insects and protect the crop. Frogs maintain ecological balance because these serve as an important link of food chain and food web in the ecosystem. In some countries, the muscular legs of frog are used as food by man. Summary Cells, tissues, organs and organ systems split up the work in a way that ensures the survival of the body as a whole and exhibit division of labor. A tissue is defined as group of cells along with intercellular substances performing one or more functions in the body. Epithelia are sheet-like tissues lining the body's surface and its cavities, ducts and tubes. Epithelia have one free surface facing a body fluid or the outside environment. Their cells are structurally and functionally connected at junctions. Diverse types of connective tissues bind together, support, strengthen, protect and insulate other tissue in the body. Soft connective tissues consist of protein fibers as well as a variety of cells arranged in a ground substance. Cartilage, bone, blood, and adipose tissue are specialized connective tissues. Cartilage and bone are both structural materials. Blood is a fluid tissue with transport functions. Adipose tissue is a reservoir of stored energy. Muscle tissue, which can contract, shorten, in response to stimulation, helps in movement of the body and specific body parts. Skeletal muscle is the muscle tissue attached to bones. Smooth muscle is a component of internal organs. Cardiac muscle makes up the contractile walls of the heart. Connective tissue covers all three types of tissues. Nervous tissue exerts greatest control over the response of body. Neurons are the basic units of nervous tissue. 
earthworm, cockroach and frog show characteristic features in body organization. In Fetima Postuma, earthworm, the body is covered by cuticle. All segments of its body are alike except the 14th, 15th and 16th segment, which are thick and dark and glandular, forming clitellum. A ring of S-shaped chitinous citae is found in each segment. These citae help in locomotion. On the ventral side spermatical openings are present in between the grooves of 5 and 6, 6 and 7, 7 and 8 and 8 and 9 segments. Female genital pores are present on 14th segment and male genital pores on 18th segment. The alimentary canal is a narrow tube made of mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, gizzard, stomach, intestine and anus. The blood vascular system is of closed type with heart and walls. Nervous system is represented by ventral nerve cord. Earthworm is hermaphrodite. Two pairs of testes occur in the 10th and 11th segment, respectively. A pair of ovaries are present on 12th and 13th intersegmental septum. It is a protandrous animal with cross-fertilization. Fertilization and development take place in cocoons secreted by the glands of clitellum. The body of cockroach, Periplaneta americana, is covered by chitinous exoskeleton. It is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. Segments bear jointed appendages. There are three segments of thorax, each bearing a pair of walking legs. Two pairs of wings are present, one pair each on second and third segment. There are ten segments in abdomen. Alimentary canal is well developed with a mouth surrounded by mouth parts, a pharynx, oesophagus, crop, gizzard, midget, hindgut and anus. Hepatic CC are present at the junction of foregut and midgut. Malpighian tubules are present at the junction of midgut and hindgut and help in excretion. A pair of salivary gland is present near crop. The blood vascular system is of open type. Respiration takes place by network of trachea. Trachea opens outside with spiracles. Nervous system is represented by segmentally arranged ganglia and ventral nerve cord. A pair of testes is present in 4th, 6th segments and ovaries in 2nd to 6th segments. Fertilization is internal. Female produces 9 to 10 uthika bearing developing embryos. After rupturing of single uthika 16 young ones, called nymphs come out. The Indian bullfrog, Rana tigrina, is the common frog found in India. Body is covered by skin. Mucous glands are present in the skin which is highly vascularized and helps in respiration in water and on land. Body is divisible into head and trunk. A muscular tongue is present, which is bilobed at the tip and is used in capturing the prey. The alimentary canal consists of oesophagus, stomach, intestine and rectum, which open into the cloaca. The main digestive glands are liver and pancreas. It can respire in water through skin and through lungs on land. Circulatory system is closed with single circulation. RBCs are nucleated. Nervous system is organized into central, peripheral and autonomic. The organs of urinogenital system are kidneys and urinogenital ducts which open into the cloaca. The male reproductive organ is a pair of testes. The female reproductive organ is a pair of ovaries. A female lays 2,500 to 3,000 ova at a time. The fertilization and development are external. The eggs hatch into tadpoles, which metamorphose into frogs. Thank you for tuning in. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and subscribe for the upcoming videos. Check out more videos from the playlist. Also comment down if you have some queries or suggestion. Mafi talafi ki kafi parai kam nahi. G up, boleti mera naam nahi. Pills pop, I let the weed smoke. Sometimes just talking does not make the pain go. 
तू ही आग तू ही उस पे पड़ती बारिश मैं वो खाली हवेली जिसकी तू अकेली बारिश